Thanks very much. Well, that was Sunil Mittal there clarifying a lot of things, uh, uh, as, as we've been actually pointing out, Siddharth and Sajid have been pointing out in terms of the structure, the SPV structure that will be based out of Netherlands. He did allude to the fact that we have a tax uh, treaty with, uh, with Netherlands and, of course, the fact that uh, most of the approvals, that process will begin now. He doesn't envisage any trouble on account of Gabon or even Nigeria, for that matter. That is Sunil Mittal, uh, uh, you know, clarifying that at this point in time. He's also said that they're comfortable with the debt levels, you know, don't need to reduce them anytime soon. He said that he will take his sweet time to decide on when to bring down his debt and uh, the instruments by which to do that. Romal Shetty, head of uh, telecom at KPMG, joins us. Romal, you've heard Sunil Mittal. Uh, your thoughts on the way that this has been structured and finally done? Yeah, I think it's, uh, you know, uh, you know, they, they had to take a, they had to take a big leap forward. So you had to take a certain amount of risk. So finally, I think, you know, the deal being uh, signed with, with only after all the regulatory approvals are obtained is, is, is the right way to go. Uh, so I think it's, 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 it's the right step. Uh, but now it's a question of implementing uh, what Bharti is, is very good at in a, in a, in a difficult market. Right. Uh, Roman, you know, uh, Sunil Mittal, they're also saying that they're comfortable with their debt levels. They will take a call on what to actually do, not clarifying on whether we will see any equity dilution anytime soon, not seem to be suggesting at that at this point in time, at least. What did you make of that? Yeah, I, I think so, because I think the, the, the way they're going to go about it is probably uh, to look at uh, Zane's asset itself, sort of uh, doing the self-funding, uh, rather than actually going through an uh, equity dilution route. So I think th that's what uh, the whole idea would be that in the next, uh, you know, 15 to 18 months, uh, each of these Zane's assets will start, uh, you know, being cash creative and actually uh, funding the debt. To that? Yeah, uh, in fact, one of the uh, questions that really, if you look at the network and the way it has panned out across these 15 countries, uh, one of the key questions is uh, there are different levels of market penetration. There, uh, a country like Gabon has almost 130 uh, percent penetration. There are other economies where it is 15, 20 percent. So really, is th and if you look at the ARPU picture also, and I'm referring to figures that were available, are available on the Zen website, a September 2009 presentation, it doesn't seem really that many of these markets have the elastic elasticity and the capability to perhaps move to a higher ARPU level. So what are we really talking about in some of these countries? A fact that you will keep pumping in money and the uh, return on that will keep getting delayed because these are highly competitive markets which may not sustain a higher ARPU going forward? No, I think, uh, see, one of the things while, uh, you know, sort of some places where you mentioned obviously the penetration levels being high, but one of the things is that the talk time, the talk time is something in Africa which is quite low and, and especially in some of the Zane's assets is just about 110 minutes. Uh, you look at India, we're about 440 minutes which is nearly, you know, four times more. So there is obviously a potential to increase talk time, which is which is not happening. Second is also in terms of products. I think, uh, you know, typically uh, most products have been voice related. I think it's the value-added services products is where your ARPUs will increase. And if you can bring something into the economic life cycle of people, you will be able to change that. So the ARPUs, if you compare probably uh, MTN ARPUs in, in, in number of markets are probably seven, eight dollars. Uh, Zane ARPUs are probably four or five uh, dollars. So there is clearly a, a potential to improve those ARPUs as well as improve talk time, which I think ultimately will result in higher ARPUs. All right, Romal, many thanks for joining us on India Business Hour. Mohit Saraf, uh, Luthra and Luthra joins us now. Mohit, uh, your thoughts on what we have been discussing. We just had Sunil Mittal on the channel uh, uh, acknowledging the fact that it will be an SPV lead structure based out of the Netherlands, the tax avoidance treaty that we actually had, so the tax benefits of that, and of course at this point in time, not looking at equity dilution. I think it's a wonderful deal, and, and it's a big deal, and it's a challenging deal. And fortunately, I would look at it when I look at the press release and what I've heard and read in the newspapers. It looks a deal which does not have that much of regulatory challenges from Indian side. Uh, there would be some challenges because telecom as a sector gets heavily regulated. And since uh, Zion has uh, uh, operations in 15 countries, then there could be regulatory ch challenges and regulatory approval because controlling shareholder would be changing and those things possibly have to be gone through. But I would expect that it will be a much more simpler deal because the Indian capital market regulator is not involved and uh, overseas uh, then BV is not a listed entity. 
So it will probably be a much simpler deal. I don't see too much of challenges here, but I see it's a brilliant deal. And it's a big deal. Well, much the, simpler than MTN for certain, Mohit. Much, much simpler for, <laughs> for, uh, in comparison to MTN. In fact, uh, you know, on the Indian regulatory side, there were really no concerns on, on uh, you know, this deal touching any obstacles. But uh, Sunil Mittal on this channel clarifying that he doesn't anticipate any trouble, whether it's Gabon or whether it's Nigeria. Uh, you know, how easy is it actually going to be to win over... Uh, even though it minority shareholders, we know with the approval of the minority shareholders, and, and could, could that be a bugbear, really? It could be. I would say, yes, it could be. And I believe that, uh, knowing Bharti, they would have gone right indemnity uh, uh, from the sh uh, shareholders so that they are well covered on that. Uh, any of these things can be a, a, a spoil spot. But I don't expect too much of challenge, really. At the end of the day, the, com the Iran has 15 countries operation. What we understand is most of the countries, they have a controlling interest. They have local partners. And we have, understand a, there is probably a problem in one, one of the local jurisdictions. So, yes, there could be challenges, but I don't see that. Uh, and I have never done a deal which did not have challenges. So they, all deals are challenges. This is also a deal. But uh, if you see the size of the deal, uh, the challenges which has come in the press look very, very simple. So I would start All right, those it, challenges it, look very... Those challenges you're saying look very simple. Siddharth, uh, you have a question for Mohit? Uh, yes. Uh, in fact, uh, if uh, the SPV structure in a tax-efficient administration like the Netherlands, uh, Mohit, I know it, it would possibly be complete speculation, but for the moment, do you expect that this is where this company is ultimately going to be headquartered, or do you see it moving to some other domain which is perhaps more efficient in tax terms and perhaps also uh, leads to an eventual overseas listing? Is that in the realm of possibility at all? No, I, I don't expect that challenge right now. Why? There's no need to move companies for listing. Uh, you can have a company listed in Netherlands and listed in New York Stock Exchange. So I don't see that much of a challenge. And moving loan, because this is a leveraged deal, uh, and Bharti is going to raise almost $8.5 billion overseas, or maybe $7 billion overseas loan. So moving that loan, this will be a seriously leveraged company. The assets of the target, like all these 15 countries would be leveraged. They will probably be a part of security. The loan will be sitting in this SPV. So moving this company would be a phenomenal exercise and will be very time-taking. So I don't see it. I don't expect that that is what they will do. They must have looked at the double the tax avoidance treaty. There is a favorable treaty with Netherlands. So really they've housed the place and where they'll keep it. And they can list this entity anywhere they want. All right. Thank you, Mohit. All right, Mohit Saraf, many thanks for joining us. That was Mohit Saraf, senior partner at Luthra and Luthra. Big, big deal for the Indian telecom industry. In fact, let me just recap what has happened tonight, ladies and gentlemen, and that is Bharti Airtel has finally stitched up its deal with Zen. It's a $10.7 billion deal. With this acquisition, Bharti Airtel will become the fifth largest wireless company with operations across 18 countries. This will also expand its international footprint to about 21 countries. Remember, they already have operations in countries like Seychelles and Jersey. The company's network will now cover 1.8 billion people, the second largest population coverage among telecom companies globally. There will be challenges. The road ahead is not going to be a smooth one. There will be challenges specifically with regards to some of the countries mentioned, Nigeria and Gabon. But as Moit Saraf was pointing out, it's a big deal. It's going to come with its share of challenges. So Sunil Mittal has finally done it. He tried to tangle with MTN twice in the past, but his African safari has finally been stitched up. Siddharth Jaravi, you've been tracking this company and this sector for very, very long. A big, big day for Bharti Airtel and a very big day for uh, for uh, India as well. Well, Siddharth, uh, Siddharth's no longer with us on the show, but uh, a very, very important day there as far as Bharti Airtel and, of course, um, the Indian telecom business is concerned. The, the, the thought now really is on how Bharti is going to replicate its Indian model in Africa. As you heard the analyst there from Africa suggesting that uh, Bharti is going to try and bring down the costs per minute to the levels that we are seeing in India. And that would really enhance mobile penetration as far as the African market is concerned. Uh, management Sunil Mittal telling us Manoj Kohli will be in the driver's seat. He will be managing the operations there as far as Zain is concerned. Sunil Mittal 
are also telling us that the deal closure will take some time, telling us that the regulatory approvals, that process will now begin, also telling us that he doesn't really anticipate significant challenges while getting regulatory approvals there from uh, Nigeria and Gabon. And of course, Singtel will continue to be a partner as far as Bharti's African efforts are concerned. So